morning's scripture comes to us from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 33. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust. There may yet be hope to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever, although he causes grief. He will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Awesome God, Lord, we come on this day. God, just in awe of all that you continue to do in our lives. God, grateful that you created us in your image. Lord, as we prepare our hearts and our minds on this day to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to do the work that needs to be done in our hearts. Remind us, Lord God, that we are caretakers not only of each other, but of your creation. Lord, we are grateful that we have another opportunity to see, to hear, to speak, to touch, to take in, Lord God, all of the beauty you have created. Lord, let us not be wasteful and let us be ever mindful of your goodness and your mercy shown to all of your creatures. Lord, this is our humble prayer and we pray it in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us lift our voices in praise, singing one of the great hymns of the church, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
Friends, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sin before Almighty God, holy and eternal God. You are patient with us even when we fall short. We often forget that we are not in control of anything. We often forget that you control it all. Lord, in our shortcomings, we ask that you forgive us. Help us to grow in patience and in faith. Help us to love one another Help us to grow in you. Lord, you know our hearts. Yes. Take away those things that are no longer pleasing in your sight. Give us, O oh Lord, a new song to sing, Jesus. a new testimony to share, knowing that in the end, Lord God, you will get all the honor and the glory and the praise. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Believe the good news of the gospel and Jesus Christ. We are forgiven Thanks be to God. welcome you once again to our virtual worship service. We are grateful that you continue to tune in week after week. Uh, just one announcement, we will resume in-person worship on July the 11th on a limited basis. For those of you who have not sent in your uh, reservation form. We ask that you do that as soon as possible. If you have a desire to worship in person beginning next month, you also have the option of going to our website and making your reservation there as well. Friends, it is good for us to gather virtually, by telephone, by any means necessary. Let us now go to God in prayer. Holy and eternal God, Lord, we come once again. We come before you, Lord God, as humbly as we know how. Lord, just to say thank you. Thank you for keeping us sane. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping us healthy. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping us out of harm's way. Lord, as we prepare to worship you in spirit and in truth, we ask that you open our eyes and our ears and our hearts, Lord. Help us to see and hear those things that you need us to hear and see. Order our steps, Lord God. Remind us to keep our focus on the cross. Remind us, Lord God, that it is your will that you have created us to fulfill. Remind us, Lord God, that you are in control of all things. 
And we have the blessed assurance that you are always for us and never against us. Lord, in this hour, we pray for those who mourn, Lord, those who are preparing to say goodbye to loved ones. God, we ask that you be their comfort in this season of transition and grief. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and homebound in nursing homes and hospitals, Lord God. Lord, do what you do so well. Bring about healing, bring about restoration, bring about comfort. Lord, we pray for this world in all its brokenness. God, we ask that you help us to be that light upon a hill, be that shining example of what it means to be an open and loving church. Remind us, Lord God, that we are here to be of service, not only to ourselves, but to others. That we are here to be a blessing, Lord God, to those in need. Lord, nudge us when we get stuck in our ways, when we become stubborn and not wanting to do what you would have us to do. Lord, remind us of what it's all about. It's not about us, but it's about Jesus. Help us, God, to be a stepping stone in somebody's life and not a stumbling block. Help us, God, as we travel along the way, trying to get it right, often falling short. But we're grateful for your grace and your mercy that you continue to extend to us day in and day out. Lord, do what you do so well. Bring us together as people. Help us to see you and each other. Help us to be united and not divided. We pray, Lord God, for the ministry of this great church, asking that you continue to bless us, O oh Lord. Help us to continue to be a blessing to others in this great community. Lord, we pray for those who are still mourning the loss of loved ones due to COVID. We pray for those who are still fighting, Lord God, against this dreaded disease. But God, we give thanks. We give thanks even in the midst of so much conflict and loss and hurt and pain. God, we still give thanks. Because we are still yet standing. And we can still yet tell the old, old story of how we got over and where you brought us from. And so God, we are just grateful that you have kept us. We are grateful that we have another opportunity to do the right thing. We pray for those in elected offices, praying, God, that you would continue to reside in their midst, in their hearts, and remind them, Lord God, of what they've been called to do. We pray for those in our armed services. We pray for those in public safety jobs, Lord God, everyone doing their part to keep the community at large safe. Lord, as the summer begins, we ask a special covering over our children who are now out for the summer. Lord God, we just ask that you keep them. Yes, Lord Jesus. Keep them safe, Lord God. Keep them whole. We pray for the educators and everyone that touched them over the past year, Lord God, helping them to get through. It is not lost on us, Lord God, that had it not been for you on our side, where would we be in all of this? And so God, as we prepare to worship you, let us be prepared to receive 
what you would have us to hear. Not only in this hour, but as we continue on this journey called life. Lord, this is our humble prayer and we pray it in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. At this time, we will have another selection from our choir.
Salvation, whom shall I fear? Thank you, choir, for that beautiful selection. Indeed, the Lord is the light of my life, of my salvation. Amen. This morning's sermonic text comes to us from the 130th Psalm. Out of the depths I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark inequities, inequities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its inequities. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me if you will. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'd like for you to think of me from the sermon title, Waiting. Waiting. Nobody likes waiting. We wait patiently sometimes. Sometimes we are impatient. We wait patiently for a baby to be born. We wait with bated breath for test results to come in from our doctor. We wait in line at the post office, the bank, the grocery store, amusement parks, the nail salon, the barber shop. Ugh, this haircut takes time, people. Even I have to wait. And let's not talk about having to wait in traffic from Ashley Frustrate to Highway Mixy 1. That's Ashley Phosphate and Highway 61 for y'all who don't know. We are always waiting. And no matter who or what we're waiting on or for, waiting is time consuming and it's frustrating. But watch this. Sometimes waiting is necessary. In this morning's text, we find the psalmist crying out in despair, waiting for relief from some unknown situation. And what we see here is that the the psalmist doesn't have a problem with being patient so much in waiting, but being very impatient just being very impatient because the psalmist wants to make sure God not only hears but will actually do something. And so the question this morning is simple. Why is it difficult for us to wait on God? My friends, it's difficult for us to wait on God because waiting reminds us that we are not in control. Listen, we don't know what the psalmist was experiencing, but we do know that he was overwhelmed and distraught. The psalmist knew enough to acknowledge his burden was too much to bear and he had no control over the situation but God. But God, 
The psalmist knew to turn to God. And my friends, sometimes storms come into our lives, tossing us to and fro, un- unmooring us from our foundation, from the safety of what we know to be sound and familiar and comfortable. Waiting for things to blow over reminds us that we are not in control of anything and all we can do is brace ourselves for whatever life throws at us and hope for the best. It is in waiting that our faith is tested and we must reevaluate where we are with God and ourselves and others. Oh, nobody likes waiting. It's uncomfortable. Walter Brueggemann says that the psalm, this psalm, therefore strikes one of the most poignant evangelical notes in all of the Psalter. The psalmist goes on to call God the ruler, to call on God the ruler of reality. It raises the question, if you're going to address the ruler of reality, the Lord of all, how do you do it? And Brugman says, one might think it should be from a posture of obedience or at least from a situation of prosperity and success. One ought to dress to address the king suitably dressed, properly positioned with a disciplined, well-modulated voice. But the psalmist in this psalm, this psalm is the miserable cry of a nobody from nowhere. Friends, it doesn't matter who you are. God wants to hear from you. It does not matter what your station in life is. When you are in trouble, you need to know that you can call on God. Yeah, it's okay to call your elder, your deacon, your, even your pastor, but you can call on God for yourself. Don't wait on anybody to do it because who knows your situation better than you? God. Don't wait. Go to God for yourself. And so we know that in waiting we we feel a, a sense, a loss of control, but we also know that waiting is uncomfortable. My siblings in Christ, I stand here to tell you that even though waiting is uncomfortable, there are blessings to be had in waiting. If we are willing to trust God, sometimes we are not willing to wait and we make rash decisions about situations that require more time and more patience. You know the attitude we have sometimes that, you know that attitude, I I want what I want when I want it. That attitude trips us up sometimes. My friends, waiting on God gives us an opportunity to let Jesus take the wheel instead of us wringing our hands. Often we forget that no amount of worry will change the outcome of any situation. And you know the old saying, if you can worry, then you can pray. Now, in some cases, waiting is not an option. Action must be taken if the doctor says, hey, this is what's going on, and if you don't do something, this will be the result. And that's okay. That's okay. But there's some situations in life, I just don't know how much longer we can wait. I don't know how much longer the, 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 the people at the border can wait for us to figure out what to do with them. I don't know how much longer we can wait for solid, fair, and transparent voting rights laws to finally be established in the land. I don't know how much longer we can wait. Oh, you fill in the blank. There's always something to wait for, sometimes good, sometimes not so good. 
My friends, even in our grief, how many times have we cried out to God, how much longer must I endure this pain? Lord, how much longer before my change comes? My friends, I stand here today to tell you that waiting on God can strengthen you or defeat you. The choice is up to you. And see, the beautiful thing about this psalm, it's so simple, it's so direct. There is no sugarcoating, there are no flowery words that psalms is known for, no imagery. It's just straight talk. And my friends, God expects us to turn to God in times of great despair and uncertainty. As one of my pastor friends in Brooklyn, New York, puts it, Reverend Eric Thomas puts it this way, sometimes we have to talk to God with hot sauce. That means even when we're angry and confused and we just can't figure out what to do or where to turn, we just have to give it all to God. And I know we are good low country folks and we've been raised, you don't fly in God's face and you don't question God. But sometimes you've got to talk to God with hot sauce when you can't make sense of what's going on. And guess what? Contrary to popular belief, God's not angry because God already knows what's in our hearts. And surely God knows when we are in trouble. When a person comes to a significant understanding in the relationship, their relationship with God, my friends, it is unnatural to keep it to yourself. The story, the experience, it must be shared. It is like when you are with a good friend and you haven't seen them in a long time. There is little in your conversation that does not have significance all the way through it. And it is the way of this psalmist in this particular psalm. And so it is for us as well. When we are in conversation with God, we are in conversation with a friend. Someone who wants the best for us. Someone who is for us and not against us. And so knowing all of that, yes, waiting is uncomfortable. Yes, nobody likes doing it. But in the waiting, we are reminded that God is always available to us. The Hebrew, the Hebrew word for the word here in this passage is samah. And the Hebrew word for attentive is kasab. Samah, to hear. Kasab, to be attentive. In this context, the writer is pleading with God to not only hear him, but to be attentive, to feel him, to do something. My friends, God is always working on our behalf, even when we can't see the full picture. And sometimes we see God working and it's not what we want. Let me say that again. Sometimes we see God working and it's not what we want. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we want the wrong things for the wrong reason at the wrong time. My friends, God's timing is perfect. So no matter what we are going through, trust and know that when God comes through, the timing is always perfect. The Reverend Bill Thomas puts it this way, God's perfect timing, it does two things. It grows our faith as we are forced to wait and trust in God. And it makes certain that God and God alone gets the glory and praise for pulling us through. Not the latest Louis Vuitton bag, not the latest Mercedes Benz, not the latest pair of designer shoes. But it is God that gets the glory for pulling us through when we didn't know what through looked like. The 31st Psalm tells us that our times 
are in God's hands. And that alone, friends, should give us the blessed assurance that no matter what we are facing, that God will always be there. We can rest assured in that. God is a promise-keeping God. And even when we fall short, God continues to pick us up and dust us off and gives us another opportunity to get it right. Sometimes we are patient in our waiting. Sometimes we are not. Oh, the psalmist acknowledges all the things that God has done and the things that God could do but does not do. God does not hold our sins against us. Thank God for God's mercy, for not keeping us pinned down in the things that we have found ourselves enmeshed in. Thank God that God throws our sins into the sea of forgetfulness and not hold us hostage. There is freedom in God, my friends. And so if we would just be patient and wait, whatever it is you're going through, wait. Know that God is working it out. Wait. Don't try to rush God because you can't wait. Sit and be still. Know that whatever it is, God has already worked it out. And I know there are some of us who are slow in telling God about our troubles because some of us feel that we are not worthy or that God does not care about what's, what we're going through. My friends, don't let anybody or anything prevent you from telling God your troubles. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. It's all right. But while we are waiting, let there be growth. Let there be growth. Let there be hope. There is nothing too hard for God. God did it for the Israelites. God has done it for us time and time again. There is nothing too hard for God. All you have to do is wait. And sometimes the waiting is not easy. But that's all right. Just know that in the waiting, God is there as well. In the name of the one who was and who is and who is to come. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We praise your holy name. We ask that you continue to keep us and guide us. And use us, O oh Lord. Teach us how to be patient. Teach us how to wait. Teach us, Lord God, how to be still when there is nothing that we can do. And in our waiting, it is our hope and our prayer that we will grow in love, compassion, understanding, and knowledge of you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, I charge you to go out this week and pay attention to those times when you find yourself waiting. Does it matter if you're waiting to hear from the doctor? If the doctor says, well, Know that God can always say yes. If it is a job that you're struggling with, always know that God will provide. Whatever it is that you find yourself waiting on, 
or whatever situation you find yourself waiting in, look for God every time. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Church, say.